and welcome to RC Cincy. Today we have the Axial SCX24 and we have more parts for more upgrades on this platform. I'm pretty happy with the upgrades. I want to keep it going and get it to where uh, I think it's going to perform its best. Uh, I do eventually want to do some competition crawling, like at least class two. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but I think the modifications already done have made a tremendous difference to the platform. The suspension still needs to be dialed in, which I'll actually do on a course, just to see it, just to see the way it behaves. So um, without further ado, let's get into some unboxing and talk about these uh, upgrades. So um, everything I've, I've been buying is I've been off of Amazon. It's just been really affordable and really easy to get. So I figured, why not? Uh, so this right here is a uh, servo upgrade. It does come with some hardware and a uh, mounting. Looks like the servo mountain bracket, some hardware, a plastic link, some loose screws, stuff like that. Uh, we're honestly probably only going to use the servo. Uh, it is a Emacs. These are supposed to be one of the better ones you can use for it. And uh, I really wanted a stiffer steering rack uh, with better, better performance, better performing servo and a stiffer, more heavier steering rack. So this is where this bag comes in. Uh, these are two separate orders. I'll get the links and the pricing in here for you guys in the description. Um, so far, I've not put that much money in this vehicle. It blows me away uh, how quickly, I mean, it can add up, but how quickly you can make such a huge difference to the vehicle. So, mainly the steering servo. We, this is nice to have that extra bracket and hardware and this link in case something breaks and someone needs one there's a plastic one i mean i could appreciate those parts so in uh the steering uh rack uh bag we have a aluminum uh uh steering uh servo control horn or whatever uh a black and brass um supposed to be uh black and brass um uh, steering rack it's supposed to be much different you can see all the hardware and the uh allen key we also get an allen key and this one as well so i have a million of these allen keys now it's kind of nice uh what else do we get in here uh looks like a yeah looks like a brass um servo mount so this should be for the emacs i think it's for the emacs servo so we got quite a bit to install here. Let me pull out these. I just want to look at the actual components before I install them. I don't like doing installation videos. It just takes so long. Uh, so we get a bag of hardware. I, I'm just slow and I want to take my time with it, just building it and that's part of it in my opinion. This stuff is very easy to assemble. Anyone pretty much figure it out. So you can see the brass, it's got weight. That's definitely brass, 100%. You see the way that's mounted. Man, that looks good. That's going to add some weight to the front end, which I do want, and it's not that high up. Uh, you want to keep it from the wheels, you know, from the wheel right here, from right here. You want to keep it down, keep that weight down. Uh, let's look at the actual steering linkage. Oh, yeah, that feels good. Of course, even more hardware. I mean, I have hardware for days now. Do you see how much hardware is in the other bags? Which I'll show you guys here in a second. It's insane. So let's set this bag here. Well, let's get the hardware out of it because the hardware isn't a bag. So Allen key and hardware. So you get two, huh, two bags of Allen key and hardware in the same thing. That's crazy. So these are the brass linkages. You can see the little brass bushings. These have some weights, not like this though. I feel like this one's aluminum and this one's brass. Maybe they want the weight where the servo is. I don't know. These don't feel like brass. These feels like aluminum with brass fittings, to be honest with you. I thought the whole thing was brass. Well, you can see that it's not brass because this shows the aluminum color under it. Ah, uh, that's a little bit disappointing, but uh, it's still, this is gonna add most of the weight right there. I mean, that 
I need to get a scale because we can have like the original servo and original steering rack and then we can weigh the new mount, the new steering rack and servo and weigh the difference. I should have been weighing these components. I do have a scale, I just completely forgot. It's really, I know uh, weight does matter and depending where the weight is, the lower the center of gravity, the better. So that stuff does matter, believe it or not. So I've never done the steering rack on this as far as the bags of hardware. We get another bag of hardware. Jeez, old Pete. Ain't gonna know what to do with all this hardware. So this is, is it metal at least? Yep, it is aluminum. Instead of the plastic one, so aluminum there. And of course, more hardware. <laughs> so there we go. So this all came together in one bag. And I'll show you what came together in the other bag. I really didn't show the hardware, honestly. Uh, you can see all the extras and the stuff that I've replaced already is going back in that box. So that's the way I'm gonna keep everything. I'm just gonna bring this box with me because it has the charger. Uh, I could slide my remote in there. I could slide the car in there if I wanted to. Uh, most likely I won't, but I'll have the spare uh, axles that it came with. I'll have the spare wheels, uh, steering, um, spare shocks. I literally have a ton of parts there and a bunch of hardware. So that's really nice to have. Let's go ahead and pull all this stuff out because it did come with it. Now there was a couple loose screws in there. I don't know why, I guess I could put them in the one of these bags. So of course it came with the plastic one that came with this side, so I'll split it up. So this one came with the plastic and this hardware and it also came with this bag sealed. It looks like it threw in a, uh, a uh, the actual servo mount and see if it's the same. So I remember reading, is it bigger? Is the length the same? Yep, the length is the same. Is this one wider? Nope, it's the same. Okay, so this one obviously being plastic, that one being brass, I'm definitely using that one. So there's a the plastic one because the original one isn't as big, I don't think. And then obviously the hardware, there is two loose screws. I'm just gonna go ahead. These may go to the plastic ones, let's see. Yep, these thread into the plastic ones. So I'm gonna go ahead. At least I think they do. I'm just gonna go ahead and start them with both. Since I'm not using the plastic ones, I'm gonna go ahead and start them both into those like so and leave it like that for now so there's everything you get in that bag uh the total oh there's another bag of course with the allen key with this set of course it had to come with the allen key and more hardware <laughs> so you got a ton of hardware um you know with them you always get allen keys uh, all these screws and bolts and stuff should be the same size so as far as i don't know how hard it is to I love the Velcro. Uh, I think the magnetic one isn't. All these are not meant for appearances. These are meant for performance to get better crawling out of the, oh yeah, that's a bigger servo, that's for sure, than the original one. Oh yeah, that is, whoops. <laughs> Gotta love that body. That is definitely a bigger, and you can see has metal gears. You can see how much bigger that servo is. Uh, once I pull that one out, I'll kind of compare it. Like after I pull it out, I'll kind of compare everything to it and then I'll put it back in. I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna film every little piece taking it apart. Uh, I've never done this. Like I said, I've never worked on a SCX24. It looks pretty basic. Uh, you remove it from here, the steering rack, this piece, that piece, that, the servo, and the mounting system because you're gonna need the bigger mount. So it doesn't seem like it's gonna to be too terribly hard. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start just removing everything. The wire, let's see how they ran the wire. Oh, they plugged it directly into channel, the first spot, easy. So it's in channel one. Oh, by the way, I just realized something. There's one thing I didn't like is, let me close this for a second. One thing I didn't like is when you turn this vehicle on, the bottom ones are always on, 
but the top ones are off. That makes no sense to me. Wouldn't you want to turn, leave always the top ones on and then turn off the bottom ones or turn them on and turn them off and have the top ones on? I feel like it's vice versa. I don't like that. Very simple solution. You just unplug and switch the right ones out. Uh, so you just switch those two connectors out. Make sure you put positive where positive goes and so forth and so on. So you should be able to unplug this one uh, and plug, switch these two places. Switch those two around, which should make no difference. All it's gonna do is allow the top ones to always be on and then turn off the bottom ones and have the bottom and the top and the bottom ones or top ones flash, I do believe. So hold on, let me correct myself by plugging it in. So let's go ahead and plug this in. I just wanna show you really quickly. This is a free modification, by the way. I love free ones. I'll try to find other free ones and try to figure out other free ones to share with you guys. Oh, wait, there's no batteries in the transmitter. Dang it. Oh, wait, I could just steal the ones from my hydraulic excavator. Uh, I actually just did a video on this, pulled it out, kind of checked everything on it, and did like a almost one year update. I think I'm like, I don't know, two weeks shy of one year. So I kinda, I'm probably gonna release it soon. So it'll be shy of a year, but uh, it's been good to me. And I just really wanna do a video letting everyone know uh, my experiences with that hydraulic excavator. So if you're into that, please check that video out. It should be coming out soon. It may be coming out before this one, so. Whoops. Man, these batteries wanna spring out of here. <laughs> you know? These batteries are a little weak though. I've had these for a while in that transmitter and I've used them a lot digging. So I'll probably be replacing these eventually, but I just need something to bind this. So as you can see, the bottom ones are on. I feel like it should be vice versa. So let me hit the switch. I feel like that's when the bottom one should come on and then the bottom ones should flash instead of the top, in my opinion. And then the bottom one should always be on and the top one should come on and then the bottom one should flash, in my opinion. So a free mod is just to pl unplug the channel and plug it in. You theoretically, uh, now I do have a light kit that has red. I thought about putting red lights in these right here. I thought about it. Uh, the light kit is $10 off of Amazon. It's typically for 110, excuse me, 110 scale stuff. But the lights are like three mil. And I think these are three mil lights or two mil. So it'd be close enough. I would just have to, do some kind of bucket or a dab, tiny dab of hot glue or place them there. I don't know. I'd figure it out. Uh, but I would just need, being this a hard body, I would just need to shine, the, put the red little light right where the bucket is, where the light fixture is. And it illuminate that light and it'll look like lights. You know what I mean? And I could probably plug it into, there is, is there other channels? Wow, why is there so many channels on this? So... Looking at this chart, there are labels from the top. So channel one steering, um, there is nothing I think in channel, or maybe we're taking power from channel two. Uh, the ESC obviously is in there, it's a two and one. Uh, but look at all these other plugs. So you have one, three, because channel two, see how it goes from one to three because channel two is for throttle. So it's not gonna give you that because it's all at one. It's gonna, it goes channel one, channel three, channel four, head and then it says CLL2 and then CLR3 don't know what that's for now the remote does have another channel up here I mean another channel right here so I wonder if you can plug something into that and use that like a winch or I don't know what accessories they have a winch or lights or a horn or a sound box I, I don't know <laughs> but it clearly has capabilities uh to plug other stuff into this so this tells me more lights uh tons of possibilities so that's really cool and you can fix my issue by just a free plug and plug in so we're going to swap those while we're doing a steering rack we're in there anyways once we got everything on bolted give us a little more room i'm gonna get a light in there swap those I'm gonna take out the steering rack. We're gonna show them side by side sizes 
and maybe we'll get out the scale and weigh both of them. See, like the factory steering rack with the servo, how much it weighs in all the hardware, and then the new steering rack with the new steering servo and all the hardware, how much it weighs. I'll do that for you guys. So stay tuned for that. So we'll go ahead and pause it and get working on this. Uh, let me move this transmitter. I do not want to knock it off of here. Okay. So yeah, I have a gazillion little bags. <laughs> oh, this is the back panel to it. Whoops. <laughs> kind of important. Um, I, I like these transmitter. They're not bad. I actually thought about buying some um, Fly Sky little receivers and using this transmitter or similar transmitter. I have two of those for a project. But anyways, so let's go ahead and disassemble the factory uh, steering uh, rack and the servo and everything. Turn it off. We'll go ahead and get it weighed. Oh, by the way, unplug this one. This unit will drain your ba battery. So you always want to unplug. Even if this is off, this will still drain it. So unplug your battery. We'll go ahead and turn this off so we're not wasting juice. Even though these batteries are low, they're probably going to end up getting junked. Uh, one of the best investments was this little battery tester. It's about this big. It can test tight, uh, tri AA, triple A's, C's, D's. Um, has like a weird connection for 9 volt everything so i really recommend one of those trust me when you go through as many batteries or you use as many batteries for different things as i do it's hard to keep what's good batteries what are bad you can test them go through them every once in a while test all your batteries get rid of the bad ones keep the ones that are decent uh keep those for transmitter and keep fresh batteries for something that requires more power like the driving or the performance of the vehicle that's going to affect the performance so we'll be right back after we disassemble it we'll get the weight scale out and then uh, we'll weigh it and then we'll reassemble it and see how it looks. Okay, so we're back. We took out the steering rack and the servo and the servo mount. And then we assembled the new steering rack and servo and servo mount. Of course, we have all the screws in there as well. That's going to be the total weight. So the total weight for the factory one, you can see it has all the screws in there, including the one for the back and everything. So it'll be your total weight with the wire, of course. So the scale is zeroed out. We're gonna do it in grams. We're gonna set this down neatly. And we're looking at 9.67 grams. 9.67 grams. We'll do it like this. Make it easier for you guys, sorry. 9.67 grams. We're gonna take that off, let it zero out. And here is the steering rack with all the screws in it fully assembled silver i don't like that so much i may steal the screws off of the old rack i don't know i kind of want to leave the old rack intact but make sure when you assemble it you look at the old rack and you assemble it the same way same angle same everything because it will matter uh so you can see we have the screws where it assembles to the diff where it assembles to the y is what i like to call it that meets to the back of it and all the screws and the wire is longer. I may cut and solder a shorter wire and I haven't decided yet. So what we're gonna do is gonna take this bad boy and we're gonna set her down. Whoo, 27.5 grams. That is a huge, we're talking, the other one was nine, 27.05 and this one is 9.69 Holy Let me make sure I get the wire towards the center too Everything kind of keep it in the center Holy shnike. Okay, let's say 9.7 We'll give it 9.7 because this is kind of hanging off Let's give it 9.7 to be generous Nope, still not 9.7 but whatever So we have 9.7 <laughs> 9 <laughs> 27.7 six that is insane oh my goodness that is a huge gain so you're talking 18 point something you're talking 18 grams that is insane like 18 grams maybe like okay 17 point something but basically 18 grams that is insane difference more than double double it is doubling the weight gained doubling the weight that is insane you can feel it when you pick it up this nothing it's 
It's got a lot of slop and play in it, I've noticed, too. That is a lot more sloppy, a lot of loose. This one seems, once you get it in the position, seems like it's going to be a lot more solider. Like it, it just it just feels stronger. It feels some more solid. We'll see. Um, depends on the bushings and stuff. I guess how they make it, how precise they are, machining or whatever. So, yeah. Mind-boggling. So, the platform isn't too bad to do. Remember, the dry shaft will slide out on you. As you're pulling... I mean, you don't have to get the slide out, but it mine slid out whenever I angled it to work on it. You can slide it back in. No big deal. Remember, there's a T back here. See this? The dry shaft, and there's like what I consider, where is it at? This little Y right here, I consider, it looks like a wishing bone, wishbone, it might be a wishbone suspension technically. But yeah, wishbone right there connects right to it. Obviously it connects to the wheels right here. Are those bushings or is this plastic? Those are plastic. Next thing I might do these knuckles right here. I don't know, we'll see. Honestly, I feel like that's gonna take a lot of slop out. That's gonna add more weight down low on the axle that's gonna make a difference. Every upgrade I've done was not so much for looks. Yeah, it looks better. I guess it's okay with having some of the silver on there because the shocks have some silver on there. There's some silver like beat locks on there with some brass, silver black brass is a theme underneath there. I guess I can rock it with this brass fitting. I don't know. I guess I'll do brass fittings for now. I mean, I could change it out. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I did use my little power tool. I found the right tip. I like these, they're six, they run 1.5 and 1.5, two AA batteries. They're six volt and, I mean, three volt, yeah. And they're 100 RPM, so they're really slow turning, hard to strip, you have to force it. I like them. Uh, you are gonna need a bigger size that's not included for, because I didn't take this one off. For this one, that is a bigger size. It is this size, I don't know, I have the thing right here. Uh, one baby focus 1.5 and this one is 1.3 <laughs> your keys they give you should be technically 1.3 i have like three or four of those now but yeah so what we'll do is go ahead and assemble it look at it plug up the steering thing now if i'm gonna if i'm gonna coil it really tight and then run it up. I, I really like to cut this wire and shorten it because I mean, it is weight if I could somehow, because this mounts like this, if I could somehow keep it nice and tight and neat in here, figure out a way to like make it, oh, make it really tight. But I don't want to damage the wire either. I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna drop the screws. By the way, I dropped one of the black screws as well. I am really notorious for dropping them. Luckily I have like a gazillion hardware <laughs> screws. But I thought about like making like a tight wad up here. I don't know. And you're gonna see it's gonna look like crap. Uh, I wouldn't mind using like some black heat shrink or something, protect these, get rid of the yellow ugly wires. Uh, I could heat shrink and do these wires as well. I just have so many ideas that I wanna do to, I just haven't gotten to. And I need to find the screws. My wife is like a miracle worker when it comes to finding the screws. Oh, I found it. That's a first. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that's a first. There it is right there. Usually I can't find it. Now there was another little black one and I don't know, I think it went under the table so I'm okay the dog can't get to it. Uh, but yeah. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead. <laughs> I love it. I love modifying and working on these vehicles. So honestly, I'm gonna be 100 times. I wasn't sure how this came apart. So it's very simple. Reverse engineer it, look at it like this way. You can see the angle, which way those are supposed to be turned, the linkage, the way the servo is supposed to lay in there, uh, everything. There is a space there, and there is a space there. I don't know, it just doesn't go all the way on. It doesn't feel like it wants to go all the way on. This one, I can't even turn it. Jesus, that's gonna be one monster of a servo. That's literally, oh, sizes, so sorry bigger by far bigger heftier it is a little bit wider and it's a little bit thicker it's a little bit bigger not much but it's big enough that you i think you have to use a different servo tray or whatever 
So yeah, really, really impressive stuff there. Uh, like I said, you're gonna have to back some of those screws out. I just did it to show you the to total package weight. Uh, we could have weighed it before and after, I guess, but I do have a tray that gets pretty big. We should be able to get the tires. Let me see if I can get the tires on the tray. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the body down. Yeah, it'll sit on the tray. So we could zero it out, obviously, with the tray on there. Um, but yeah, we could weigh the whole vehicle. Because now that it has the shock suspension, uh, we can look up the factory weight and then we can do our weight. Because I didn't weigh when I changed the shocks and I didn't weigh when I changed the wheels and the spacers, right? So we can weigh that. We can actually weigh the old tires, right? Then we can weigh the new tires with the spacers. Then we can weigh the old shocks and then weigh the new shocks. We could do that, but we'll just get a total package weight when we're done as well. So let's go ahead and wrap this up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> I tell you what, a little disappointing. So I plugged everything up um, and it didn't work. I tried the old factory servo, didn't steer. As soon as I unplugged it, I don't know if it was static electricity or what, I plugged it back in. Uh, the new one wouldn't do work. The old one wouldn't work. I even got a servo from an airplane that I know worked, rudder. Um, I've tried plugging this into it, just power. But here's the funny part. Let me plug this up for you guys. Uh, throttle works. It'll bind. Throttle works. Searching for signal. Solid light, throttle works. And then if, when you plug in any servo, it does not matter. One and three. Channel two is always throttle, so there is no channel two to plug into. You have one and three. Three technically is uh, the switch, which should be your lights. Four. So you're supposed to be in number one is always your steering. Positive is up top. We'll go ahead and plug in the lights. Let me show you that the lights do work. Here's the lights. So now, by the way, I switched them. Because I do want... Let me move this out of the way. Oh, it's really long. I just went and did kind of like a loop thing and I was going to plug it in. <laughs> It is a long wire. That shouldn't matter. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Let me pull these. I just want to show you that. This does work. And you plug these in. Whoops. So now when I click the line, see, I switched them. Normally it's the bottom one's working, top one's not working. Very, very simple fix. I know how to plug stuff up. I know the top is positive, I mean negative. You can see that the top is negative. You can see that these are plugged in. I know it's stretched a little bit right now because the funny way that it's being ran, but they work and I don't know why am I staring. Oh, it could be my dual rates are turned all the way down. Let's try that. Nope, let's try reverse throttle. I mean, whoops. Steering reverse, let's try that. Nope. Okay. Let's try snare and trim. There's a light flashing. Nothing. Let's try a different servo for argument's sake. Uh, positive up top. It is the first channel that you're steering. I knew that from a mile away. And nothing. I 
I've been building and working on RCs for a very long time. I've never seen this happen before. Just by plugging it, even if you plug it wrong, if by the way, if you plug this like this, the servo will just burn out. What it'll do is it'll go all the way to one side and make a funny noise. And never once did that, never plugged it in wrong. I knew exactly which ones to crisscross to fix the headlight issue. So now I have a receiver that only has throttle. So it's kind of useless. Uh, of course, me being me, I already ordered one while I was troubleshooting. I figured to order one. I ordered one already uh, two to five days, something like that, two to three days. Uh, of course, you got your them packaging, and hopefully they'll get it out today. I'll need a new sticky pad. I did remove the old one. Uh, I'll need a new sticky pad. I am tempted to just get a small receiver, get like a a decent transmitter like even a fly sky like a really nice one that's not that much so i think it's like 30 something bucks 20 something bucks 30 something bucks with the receiver and just get an esc um get an esc get a receiver and be done with it because this all this is esc and receiver uh the receiver just has to have you know three channels at least because I technically don't have nothing I'm using for this channel. It's only the switch that I'm using. So long as it's at least a three channel receiver, typically when you buy those, they're at least four or five channels. So uh, should be no issue there. I'm tempted to skip over this, uh, but I'm also tempted to open this up now for you guys. So this sticky pad is not gonna get reused. I don't know how this is being held together. If it's just glue, if there's a screw under here, uh, there is tape on this side. I guarantee this tape's almost holding it. I can almost guarantee you. Just open it up. Like so. Tape on this side. This is the tape that's holding it. I guarantee, I guarantee it. Yeah, I guarantee it. So, let's peel up this side. It looks like it's three-sided. So, peel it side up. Come on. I have no nails. And it's just frustrating that I'm probably not going to be able to repair this. There is a number for it. I'll set that here for now. There we go. I removed it. Something's going on here. Something could have, that looks, that, that, that looks a little. No capacitive, this is the only thing I can replace. That's not popped, I'm screwed. The prongs are all still attached. Let's try messing with it now. We'll just do power only. You see the light? Go ahead and bind it. Huh. There we go. Solid light. Okay. Now let's try plugging it in. Why should I be making like a proper connection or something? You're stupid. I feel like it's almost. Does it save memory? Turn all the way up. See, I can't go anymore. See how it doesn't flash anymore. It flashes down. So steering rates is all the way up. Nothing. I feel like it's getting power though, because when I plug it up this way, watch. 
spasm. That is definitely a steering one. This is channel three. That's not going to be steering. That's going to be the switch. Let's see if the switch gets anything. Going on it. Nothing. The other one's going to be channel four power. You get something out of this, I'll be happy. A flash or a blip. No, so. This has now just become a fancy throttle <laughs> with power for lights. Is there anything I just need to go forward and backward only? Not really. <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh, I gotta look on the date. I don't wanna send the whole truck. I could probably reach out to uh, Axial and tell them when I purchased this. I purchased this from Amazon, so it was through their store, through Amazon. Um, you know, full price. Um, definitely the legitimate thing. So I wonder if they will, um, you know, do something about it. I mean, it's, it's crap. You shouldn't. Now I did go look at the, what do you call it? I did look at the, uh, uh, whoops. What's it called? The, uh, the actual page reviews and a lot of people are having these conk out on them. That is very, very unfortunate because, um, you know, it's very, very unfortunate. So we're gonna snap that back together. We're gonna put the tape back down onto it. Very, very unfortunate that they're just conking out on you like that. I'm kind of upset about that, to be honest with you. It's kind of upsetting. Put that other tape on there. And that's it, there you have it. They should honestly replace this because I've done nothing wrong. What I've literally done is upgrade a servo. I knew what channel to put it in. I knew positive, negative is up top. You say positive, but it's positive up top. Um, what do you call it? It goes positive, uh, positive, negative, positive signal. Signal is always at your bottom. It even has a chart right here. I've done this a million times. It's just not doing steering no more. So uh, I do need to get a receiver though to test my servos, make sure like this one didn't cook because that's a very, that's not a cheap servo. It's 16 bucks for that and like the plastic holder and a plastic arm was $16. So honestly, I had really high grade uh, airplane servos that would probably did the same thing, honestly. Yep, they're the same size as that one. Uh, I just needed them out. So I have like metal geared ones as well high quality like this, really torquey, really high quality. I do have those as well, but I'm just, like I said, I'm kind of bummed out. Make sure you clean this lid where the new sticky thing's gonna go. Hopefully it comes with a new sticky thing. If not, I have them sticky stuff, no big deal. Uh, we'll get the new one installed. We'll get the lights the right way so they light up at the headlight. Then I could just turn on the bottom ones like I wanted and we can complete this build. So I'm so sorry I didn't get to finish it, guys. Uh, bummer, definitely a bummer, let's just Tuck everything under here like it would normally go with that loop nice and tight. I'm not gonna lie, um, I like the steering rack. Has a little bit of silver. That's my shocks maybe worked a little bit. They're a little stiff, I noticed they're sticking. They almost need um, adjusting. Like I said, they're all the way turned out so they have like the littlest amount of spring. This is one of the softest springs. I do have a harder spring and I can turn and adjust it. So like I said, I didn't really want to do that until I hit the course. And then I'd bring the, this with me that has all my spare parts. going to have my extra servo, steering rack, joints, parts. I actually put the manual in there because I was wanting to see if there was a way to like, I don't know, maybe I got something wrong. Of course I didn't, but you know, it was driving me crazy. So I got the manual after the troubleshooting thing. Uh, I will have to bind the new one. I think I'll have to bind it. That's the same protocol. Um, so you can see clearly, I mean, how many parts I have for it. And there's gonna be more in there now. So, you know, I'm gonna always bring this with me just cause it's gonna have all my parts. I put a little uh, wheel tool in there uh, as well. I'll probably have this thing as well. I love it. That's what I've been taking stuff apart where it works really, really well. So I'm really bummed out, guys. I'm not saying it's trash. It can happen. Static electricity, man, ain't no joke. People don't realize that, like, cell electricity will kill every electronic on Earth. 
Man, that's good. I love it. It needs adjustment. I just don't want to adjust it yet until I hit the trail. See how it's, if it needs forward adjustment, back adjustment. You know, if I need it right like that, or I need it right like this, whatever it may be. It just needs to be adjusted. The weight on the wheels. I could tell you right now, the weight, I, even though I took that ESC out, the weight now. Remember before when I balanced it? Which way was it going? Backwards? Still is. Oh, no, we removed the ESC. Hold on. Remove the ESC and the wires. Let's just hypothetically kind of. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of sticky left there. We'll try to put it the right way too. Pretend everything's plugged up. Why is this side of the bumper so loose? Man, that bumper's become loose. I gotta tighten it up. I plan on flipping. I'll do, I'll show you my free mods. I'll do that in the video because it's low enough. But, uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, balancing act. Remember how it was extremely balanced? Now, mind you, I'm using that platform in the middle. That tire, if I remove that tire, we may, like almost, it's that dang on battery. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit, like, let me pick it up one finger. Yeah, it's ever so slightly rear bias. If we did a, um, axle uh, cover right here, housing cover or whatever you want to call it. If we did one of those brass in the front and left it and did maybe aluminum one or left it plastic in the back, I don't know, or maybe just simply add a weight, guys very very simple those sticky lead weights just do one right on top of here right here there's space if this is higher there or here on this side or on top of the servo which i don't want to show it maybe under this see on the under part right here right under there it's probably where i'm going to stick one or two just those little uh sticky ones you put on the inside of a wheel i had some for my excavator i don't know if i still have some left that's all it would need and get it to where it's just better balanced like it's right dude it wants to give that to me like it's so freaking close like it, it, it it's so close <laughs> that's dead dude that's about dead level i love it so yeah a little bit of a bummer but hey, I'm gonna show you guys what goes on. It happens, it can't happen to you guys. It sucks, you know, that's an expense. That could, that, you know, that 20, okay, it was $24.99 with the $5 shipping. That 30 bucks could have went towards a lot of stuff. I could have I got all new linkages. I could have got, uh, what was my next upgrade? I could have got a better motor and mounting brackets. I could have got a new, trans, a new transmission. I could have put a two-speed and a motor in it for 30 bucks. I think it's like $24.99 or $29.99. It's like a motor, like a 60T or 50T. I can't remember, 55T. They have so many variants, you could choose it, I'm sure. And then like an aluminum little uh, transmission with the motor mount for 30 bucks. So, and tons of other mods that I could probably be thinking of, but I just can't think of right now. So, for now, uh, we'll have to wait till we get it in, and then we'll hit track like i said i want this to be a level two i think it'll accomplish it i don't think it needs much more than one little weight in that uh all in one is all it needs and then obviously the adjusting of suspension this is all you need to just conquer anything it's wider the suspension is amazing it's got a better better steering tighter steering look at that way way tighter steering than before you know with brass some of them some of it's aluminum some is brass the bracket right there that's the weight is brass big old steering servo i mean you just can't go wrong and it still looks good everything can still be hidden love it so there you have it guys the axial sex 24 we will do a video when the new all-in-one comes in if i could figure out why that happened i have no freaking idea uh, i don't know how many receivers i messed with pulled in and pulled out i've never had that happen um i don't know I have a BC. I don't think that's going to do anything. It's all in one. 
Uh, I have another receiver. I just don't have... I had a small 10-amp ESC. And I don't know where they're at. Uh, I had actually two 10-amp ESC with this kind of plug, by the way. And I have a receiver. So I could just bypass all this, but I just can't find my 10-amp. I think they're either 10, 20, or 30. I can't remember which ones they were. I had two of those. I have a BC if I need one. I have a receiver, a small receiver. I don't have a controller, though. I have an old school one and I have a 2.4 gigahertz one, but they're all old. I'd, I'd buy something new for this. I'd buy a new setup, like a park, like a fly sky or something good, decent quality with, you know, decent stuff. But we're not going to go that route yet. We're just going to replace it, see how it goes. And if it does it one more time, I'm canning this system. I'm putting in my own ESC, my own receiver. It'll all fit right here, no problem. Small shorty receiver and an ESC laying right here. Plug everything up, no problemo. I could change the adapters, make the adapters I need. Most of them are Dean's that I see, so that's probably be the only change I'll have to make. But not a big deal. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.